Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 rookies and fantasy scoring from week 15. We do this every week to get a good idea of what these rookies are doing, who's the top performers, what are the trends, can we pick some of these guys up off waivers, should we trade for them, what are they going to project out in 2024. Mostly we talk ball on these players so you can get an idea of what these rookies are about. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button. Tap with the finger on your phone, click it with the mouse on your computer because we're covering the waiver wire every day. We're going deep on these players every single day, going on the advanced metrics, the analytics, talking about the trends and everything else. Plus, I help you set your lineups with some of these videos as well. Click that button. Stop missing out. But let's dig in here. First things first is Jordan Addison. He goes off here for 29.1 PPR fantasy points. The wide receiver one for week 15 here, and he saw six targets and 18.8% target share, ran 36 routes, 92.3 route participation rate. Justin Jefferson was on the field, and Mullen was that quarterback, and Mullen was slinging the rock a little bit, allowed Jordan Addison to eat. Had an 8 out of 8.8, .8, not the greatest, but we still got that job done. He's still getting opportunities in this offense, even though things have been wishy-washy these last few weeks. He's still showing you some signs of life. He's had a good rookie season. Jordan Addison is going to be one of the highly valued second-year guys going into next year. One of those wide receivers a lot of people are going to be banging the drum for as we get into the 2024 season. Sam Laporta was the tight end one in Week 15, 28.6 PPR fantasy points. He saw six targets and had an 18.8% .8 target share. And he's been lights out this year, especially as a rookie. And usually second-round rookies don't hit their first year. Sam Laporta is the truth. We talked about him a lot during rookie draft season. Like, he was such a good deal in the second round, especially when you were looking at Kincaid in the first round. At that spot, you could pick your wide receiver, pick another running back like a Devin A. Chan or whatever you wanted there, and then come back, scoop up Sam Laporta in the next round. You'd be sitting pretty good at that because I figured those were good talents there this is a deep tight end class and you're going to catch tight ends just hit off and on on the draft board here because we got so many talented tight ends Sam Laporta is the tight end one in Dynasty right now he is looking like it we got the age with him we got the production we're hitting quickly we got the volume in the offense just everything stacking together he's using the slot a little bit but he's also getting routes while he's running in line and he's still getting a 77.8 percent route participation rate sam laporta is the truth you see a little bit of volatility in the numbers that's what you're looking at when you look at a tight end in the nfl because they are volatile week to week but his highs are high and his lows can be low because he's a tight end but his highs are high, and compared to the other tight ends, very consistent. Look at these last, what, five weeks here? Week 11 against the Bears, 6.8 PPR fantasy points. Week 12 against the Packers, 17.7. Week 13 against the Saints, 29. Week 14, 4.7. That's against the Chicago Bears. And then week 15 against the Broncos, 28.6. That's consistent for the tight end spot. That's what you want at the tight end spot. You're going to have to pay up next year to get him because he's going to be a hot commodity. Aiden O'Connell, QB3 in fantasy last week. Really depends on the scoring in your league. It could be a little bit less, a little bit more. But 33.92 points on Sleeper, 25.9 points on the spreadsheet here that I have that can sort through draft classes. A 65.2% clean pocket rate. So every time he's throwing the ball, a little over half of them. He's got a clean pocket. That's a little low compared to some of the other quarterbacks. 8.6 average depth of target. So he's thrown a lot of short passes, dinking and dunking, but we're still getting it done here. 291 air yards. We had a lot of volume here with 34 pass attempts, 35 dropbacks. For a rookie quarterback, for a guy who was drafted in the middle rounds, he's doing pretty good. He did good in preseason. He's really being very serviceable right now in fantasy. Can he be the quarterback for the long term? We'll have to wait and see. Odds are kind of against it, but we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Jameer Gibbs is lights out. He's got 4-3 speed. He's used on the outside, used up the gut. He gets a lot of opportunities here. In this game, he had 13 total touches, saw two targets, 6.3% target share. The touches were down, but he can score from anywhere on the football field. That's what we saw in this contest. Scored 24.8 PPR fantasy points. 
was the RB3 of Week 15, and he's just a productive player. His value is going to be through the roof next year. You're going to have to pay up to get him if you want him in fantasy. And David Montgomery, I think, is really going to help him out for his longevity of his career. He doesn't have to get pounded during his first couple of seasons. David Montgomery can be a meat shield for him, and these running backs can really help the longevity of each of their careers here and allow them to stabilize their workload. And they're both getting good opportunities here. Montgomery's getting touchdowns. Jameer Gibbs is getting a lot of opportunities. He's showing that flash, that burst, that speed. Great, great rookie running back here. Rashi Rice has been tearing it up lately. He has just been doing that. We hit at 24.1 PPR fantasy points. The wide receiver seven for week 15 here. And since week 12 against the Raiders, 24.7 PPR fantasy points. Week 13 against the Packers, 14.4. Week 14 against the Bills, 18.2. And then last week against the Patriots, 24 fantasy points. He's been on fire. He's starting to get more targets. He's finally getting a higher route participation rate, allowing him to get more opportunities. But for the love of God, Chiefs, allow this man to get a normal ADOT. I know we're getting production with a lower ADOT. I know that. But if we can get that ADOT around 9 or 10, nothing tremendous, just normal, just average on the league. I imagine these point totals here where he's scoring 25 18 15 fantasy points can be up there around the 30s i imagine he'd be more gangbusters and it's not like he can't do it because part of his draft profile was his tested catch ability downfield his ability to rise up make plays you can do this with this man allow him to get a couple more targets downfield i was excited to see what the air yards was going to look like earlier in the week before I was able to get a hold of him. It's not good. I want deeper areas. I want him to get deeper targets here. I'm happy with the fantasy production. I think there's more meat on the bone here. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's going to allow him to stabilize even more going into next year. I think if you can catch him at a discount in Dynasty, I don't think that's a case anymore. A few weeks ago, you probably could have done so. Then I pulled the trigger because I think he's going to be a consistent asset over the next few years. However, Rashi Rice is going to start getting deeper targets over time, probably next year, year after, and that's going to allow him to tap into that upside, allow him to be more consistent over the long haul, the short targets. It's just weird. It's how the offense is ran. I feel like this is an indicator that since he's being able to be productive with a low ADOT like this, when that ADOT starts creeping up a bit, even though some of those targets are going to miss, we're going to see him hit on more fantasy points we're just going to see that happen and i feel like that's going to make him more consistent and more consistent towards the upside and i'm not talking about the 14 point games or the 18 point i'm talking more like 25 to 30 range being there more likely and more consistent to be there and in this offense with patrick mahomes they push it to him a little deeper i think that's going to be a good thing in his game i think they're going to notice that when they look back at the trends in the off season and be like hey we're going to have to work with his role a little bit we know what we got him here for we saw this in his draft profile because we saw that pretty easily. And Rashi Rice is in a perfect spot. I feel like he's going to blossom over time even more. I feel like there's more meat on the bone here. We're just seeing a little bit. I feel like there's more meat on the bone here. He's developing. He's better than what he was in college. He is. He's doing some better things on the field. He's going to increase his role. And by increasing his role, that's more routes downfield. Trey Tucker, the mid-round pick. Of the Raiders here, got some opportunities, forecasted as a slot receiver. Saw four targets, 11.8% target share. That allowed him to score 20.7 PPR fantasy points. Was the wide receiver 15 because he was able to cross the goal line. Had 102 air yards in this matchup, a 25.5 ADOT. Player you want to watch going forward. A player you're not grabbing off the waiver wire and redraft. Dynasty. If you want to throw something at your taxi squad, if you're not feeling what you got, if you want to make some moves, okay, you can probably do it. I'm not really over the moon with it, though. You can do what you want. A cheap get, though, nonetheless, and maybe he gets peppered with targets down the line and its value increases, and maybe you can deal him for a pick, or maybe you hold on and see what happens. But we saw something in this game. We saw him be productive. We have some games going forward. Maybe he starts running more routes, seeing more snaps, seeing more opportunities. Something to pay attention to, but that game script was weird against the Chargers. It was weird because the Raiders were up pretty high. They had to do things differently in this game that they wouldn't do in any other game. Something to pay attention to nonetheless. Jaden Reed, 17.2 PPR fantasy points, the wide receiver 17 on the week. We called this out. 
This was the Tampa Bay game. Wide receivers going up against Tampa Bay, you just start them, you pray to the gods, but the odds are likely they're going to score something. The odds are pretty good. Teams like to throw against Tampa Bay, and they like to throw it deep, and they like to kick up the volume here. He had eight targets, a 22.2% target share. Christian Watson was out, ran half his snaps in the slot, 7.3 average at the target, 58 air yards. Getting some opportunity in this game, able to score some fantasy points. What you expect from Jaden Reed, especially against a pass funnel defense, Tucker Craft, same thing. We saw six targets in this matchup, 16.7% target share, ran 38 routes, 92.7% route participation rate. He was the tight end six for the week here. Starting to get more opportunity. If you picked him up in Dynasty as a cheap option, you're liking this. You're liking that he's starting to get more snaps, more opportunities, more run. Something you want to see more going forward. And the tight ends are volatile. But one thing we can say about this is the tight end class in 2023 was immaculate. One of the better tight end classes we've ever seen. And we're seeing a lot of these rookie tight ends pop off and on like fireworks. Dontavian Wicks, another Packers pass catcher here to talk about. We talked about him a few times this week. That Tampa Bay Buccaneer matchup allowed a lot of these wide receivers to hit throughout the season. He scored 15.7 PPR fantasy points. Wide receiver 19 on the week. Seven targets. Almost a 20% target share. He's starting to see more workload. More opportunities in this offense, 8.3, 8 out though. I like to see him get more targets downfield. The thing about him, though, is he's got some upside. He can make plays downfield. He is a money grab down there, good at the contested catches. And he's a guy that we were looking at the later rounds here of rookie drafts for Dynasty over the spring and summer. And we thought he was a cheap get if you wanted to get somebody at wide receiver that could exceed expectations. He was one of those late round picks that I was liking in the draft process going into the draft and now we're seeing him do some things on the field jackson smith and jigba a weird rookie season but that kind of makes sense you got tyler lockett you got dk metcalf they're taking the deep targets jackson smith and jigba's got to fight for his pie to eat four targets 12.5 percent target share the wide receiver 24 so he was a wide receiver too in this week 14.8 ppr fantasy points had that big touchdown that really buoyed his fantasy production. Runs a lot of his routes out of the slot. And he's going to continue to get those short targets until something changes with either Lockett or DK Metcalf. But still, he's getting some opportunities. He's flashed enough during his rookie season to where you can't fade him next year. And it's going to be according to price where you're going to draft him. I think in redraft next year, he's going to be at a decent value. Probably the latter part of drafts especially if Lockett and Metcalf still kicking there. Metcalf should be. Lockett is the other question there. But Jackson Smith and the Jigba here, he's a solid prospect, a guy that should develop into his role, become more productive over time. It's just going to be wishy-washy over this year, next year, and maybe going forward due to the competition in the offense. But that should weed out eventually, and Jackson Smith and the Jigba should be the guy. Remember, he missed the majority of last year due to an injury, missed a lot of training camp preseason due to an injury, and now we had to start off kind of slow, and we got a lot of competition in this offense, not just at the wide receiver spot, but when they're healthy at the running back position too, gobbling up touches. But Jackson Smith and Jigba, he's in a good spot for the long term, and he's going to be at a discount next year as we go into 2024 those are the top 10 rookies in scoring from week 15 let me know which rookies you got on your fantasy team right now which rookies you got on your dynasty team right now drop that in the comments below make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out i want to thank you for watching catch you on the next video